So a lot of you have been asking me, Jay, what's the deal with the E1 build? We haven't talked about that in a while. Well, that's because I was waiting for these to arrive. You ever notice the theme around here? Jay's just waiting. What do, what do I do when I'm waiting? I smurf at Rocket League. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption. That new stuff from iFixit. Wish you didn't grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff with Singularity Computers lately, uh, and after they saw the fact that I mentioned I was doing this E1 uh, EV EVGA tribute build, which as you guys might recall, it's gonna be all EVGA motherboard, EVGA power supply, EVGA RTX 4090, because I'm not gonna turn it around right now, because it has the one of only a couple of 4090s that were built for testing purposes from EVGA. Uh, this is gonna end up being my new like workstation technically here at the studio. Um, it's gonna be a dust nightmare to keep clean, but that's okay. It's gonna be water cooled and all that. So you guys know I've done the Spectre 3 build from working with Singularity and then my personal rig right now with the Inman 925 has two custom distro plates and pump res combos that they built for me. But they also told me at the end of last year like, hey, if you're interested, we are building a power board and a distribution plate block slash plate for the E1 specifically. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't really want to get rid of any of the EVGA-ness of, of the case. Okay, I'm not gonna call it a case. A chassis, it's just a frame, right? This is a real carbon fiber frame and it's all held in suspension with wires and stuff. It's literally like a, how a bridge would be built, <laughs> like a suspension bridge. Anyway, moving on. I was worried that like, if I take away anything from this case, I'm taking away from the EVGA. But the fun fact is that I still am gonna be using all these brackets that are on here. The brackets for the power supply, the bracket right here, this, the, it's still gonna be EVGA, it's just what we're losing is this flat motherboard piece right here that's gonna be replaced with the power board. Now, if you don't know what the power board is, the power board is a power distribution block, very similar to how you would do it with fluid, only it's doing it with power. And the reason why they came up with it for this particular chassis is, as you might imagine, this is a cable management nightmare because cable links are designed for regular cases where you can run them behind the motherboard tray and hide the excess and stuff. There's no excess and it's hanging. It's literally floating here. So this gives me an opportunity to have my power supply cables just boop, like really short plug right into the power board and then on the other side have short cables plugging into the power board. So there would be really no cables here except for fans and uh, any SATA devices or, or RGB controllers or whatever. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna unbox the power board. I've not done this yet. We're gonna look at it together uh, and we're gonna get this swapped over if all goes well. They did send me kind of a rough guide. They don't have the official manual put together yet, but they were like, it should be pretty self-explanatory. The stuff that's mounted to this, this flat piece of metal here, um, this frame for the motherboard, will just, the pieces on it for like the power supply and whatnot will just get transferred over to this. So we'll see how self-explanatory it is, I guess. Um, Daniel and the team have not really, you know, sent me in the wrong direction yet on things, but holy hell, do they go through like a lifetime supply of bubble wrap every time they send me something. So this is actually the distribution plate. And what I think is cool about this, Hopefully it doesn't look weird, but it's tinted. It's tinted kind of a smoked tint, and you'll see this in a second. Everything they've ever sent me in the past has just been clear acrylic. However, this is smoked acrylic, as you can see. So what they're doing here is they're kind of giving you something that sort of matches this um, sort of a carbon kind of a theme. Now this is intended to go this way, I believe. So as you can see, it's gonna give us a distro plate distribution block on the bottom, as well as one that has a pump right here and then some return lines and stuff there and places for wires to go through. So this will also allow us to connect front rad and top rad and, and a place down in the bottom for coolant to pass through. So we'll see how this all is gonna look once it's together. There's no backing plate for this one here. Um, how the other ones for my build had the plates that went in the back which allowed you to not be able to see through, which I kind of liked. In this instance here, I don't know which way this goes. I I just, I don't know. I'm gonna have to check. I wanna say it goes like, I don't know. I'll have to look at their pictures. We'll see. <sighs> I might have to actually reference that, that photo they sent me and that small guide, but that's pretty cool looking right there. This is the power board itself. 
Now this is not an ad for Singularity Computers, but if you like this concept, they make it for like the O11 Dynamic, they make one for the Corsair series cases, the 7000 series, and I think even the 5000 series. Obviously they make it for the E1 here, they have their Spectre cases, and they're constantly adding more. Um, they said cables! So these, as you can see, are already short links for like the 24 pin and stuff to be the right length to connect to the power board without being all long and stuff. And then here's our 24 pin. This is why I am absolutely in love with Singularity Computers. I am such fanboys. Do you know why this looks like this? Do you know why? Because when you bend it, and you put the comb on there, they go straight. Do you know why? Because the top is longer than the inside because it has to make that bend. So they have the cable links already proper so that it can make that tight 90 degree bend, or actually it's a 180 degree bend, back. So you get this nice clean radius without cables going all nuts. And they did the same thing here for the EPS power, as you can see. So when you bend this, and you get the comb where it needs to be. See that? If you tried to bend a regular cable like this, this short, like bend it that tight, it'll just flail out because it, the links have to be what they are. So what I need to do right now actually is I need to put these combs in the middle and bend these and let them start training to the direction they need to go. Uh, that's because these are like PET sleeves, which are plastic. I mean, we already talked about all the PETGs and PETs and acrylics and stuff. So we need to get these to start training in their position. But I am so, this is, it's the little things I think that really make certain brands stand out. And there you go. So moving on, fanboyisms aside, I love Singularity Computers. I wish they weren't in Australia only because that's a long way away. So when I need something from them, like in a hurry, it takes a minute, even though they ship, um, DHL and it usually comes pretty quick. It's just harder to get things from them in a, in a quick hurry. So we got two things going on here. What is this? So this is a power board. This is also a power board. Why do I have two power boards? So I'm going to probably have to reference their little guide that they sent me that they said wasn't finished yet. So look, there's, they matched the gold to the, to the Kingpin mother or motherboards. So this is going to match the board. Now they know that I'm going with the dark series motherboards. Even though I have a Z690 in there, I do have a Z790 I'll be putting in because this will be a 13900K. But uh, that's neat. I like how it just matches the Kingpin motherboards. So we've got that. What is this then? They were like, it should be pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. Apparently I'm stupid because I'm not self-explaining nothing at the moment here. Okay, so. It matches the motherboard layout, which is sick because we know Remember, on this board, you can see we've got the 24 pin and the two EPS next to each other. Kingpin's team designed it that way so that you would have a cleaner cable routing. So check that out. There they are right there, matching. Um, two and a half inch SSDs can mount right here, uh, literally slide in and or there, there and mount in right there. We've got headers, RGB headers. So this is clearly gonna be the backside. Like this, this has to be the back. Our power supply cables. One 24 pin will click in right there. And then our EPS powers will click in right here. So the one thing this power board is missing that like the Spectre has is uh, GPU power. Now that's probably because they're not specking this for the new 12 volt high power plugs. So I'll probably still have to have a custom cable made to be the right link to get to where I need to go there. What else do you get with it here? Um, the same stuff you get with the other um, power boards and stuff. So you got ARGB link, which is just a cable that goes from the in on the ARGB to the out of the motherboard. Same thing with PWM for the fans. We've got our standoffs and such and our motherboard screws and all that. They come with beautiful stainless screws, like, cause, it, cause it's gonna show, what would have been even sicker is if they were able to somehow make these match the gold of the motherboard, that would have been cool. Even though I'm not a fan of black and gold, it's just, it's been the kingpin theme for a long time now, so I'm just going with it. That would have been really neat. What is this? It's not labeled, and it's just a piece of acrylic something or another. Well, this is gonna be fun. What I need to do first is I need to take the motherboard and graphics card off of here, and then I need to consult 
the manual. Probably not a whole lot to really show here other than the fact that this is just the, this is the king, the king, not kingpin, but the, they called it next gen graphics. And, and I'm the one that dubbed it not a 4090 and then everyone else just started copying me, but whatever, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, we have the original box for it. Yeah, I created the box for it, the not 4090. So in the meantime, dang, I forgot how chunky this thing was. For the meantime, we'll take the Intel Arc off of here. I just stuck that there one day because I was bored. <laughs> and we shall put this back on the wall of EVGA cards. Bam. Look at that. It's so pretty. I know. It, honestly, it really should live here, but no. It should live li living. <laughs> it should literally be doing something, which in this case is now gonna be residing in an actual build. Okay, so the motherboard is out, the graphics card is out. Uh, I could take this off, that's for the riser. Now I know what I'm gonna have to do is take it off of these suspension cables here. That much I know for a fact. See, this is just hanging, right? The IO thing, same thing with that part there. So let me see. These should just be literally like pressure fit in there. Okay, so it was the screws. I just screwed up the tension. So you turn that to get the tension where you need it. So what you do is you assemble it with it looser like that, right? And then you can tighten the tension. So it looks like what I should just have to do now is the same thing on this side. So if I, I know you guys can't see what I'm doing too well, but if I undo that one, yeah, see, okay. I'm gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna take a photo of how it all is together right now. <laughs> All right, now that it's just like pretty much falling apart because all of the tension and cables have pretty much been removed except this last one. Uh, the, the top and front are definitely different. Like here's the front one right here. You can see it's definitely different in the, the length. See that? And this is why they actually give you extra cables too. Dude, oh Jesus, <laughs> okay. It's not a single piece that now we know. Stay. <laughs> so it looks like I have to take off these brackets here because I will never ever get these through with the amount of tension that I'm feeling. So these have to come off. Oh, this is scratching the shit out of my table. Oh well. <laughs> oh well, I could be using my work, my, my J3 Sense mat, but you know what? It's just sitting there not doing anything now. Okay, so these are what mount to the arm. Like that, so. I'd, take these off. Then you can get the cable out. So I'm gonna move everything from here to here one piece at a time. So I got these corner pieces which thread apart and then they'll go through the big holes here. I've got the power supply support here which is gonna go through these two right here. That's a standoff. These three are for the power supply or the uh, riser cable deal. These two are for the power supply mount itself. And that should be pretty straightforward. That please be the same size tool required. <laughs> Don't over tighten because these are pretty soft. So that's on there. I messed up. <laughs> Wait, did I? No, I didn't. That's okay. Now we're facing the right direction. Okay, the, this, shut up. <laughs> this goes these three. This, this goes these three. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense in my head, okay? I know I, this is probably just kind of a boring video, but this is the kind of stuff that I love nerding out about. So this has to go this way up because that's where the plastic thing goes for the standoff. So let's get that started. And it's just long because like I said, it has to make it all the way through the sandwich piece that's now not sandwiched against anything. So now I'm just a little worried about the amount of weight that's gonna be just on PCB material when it comes to the graphics card. A little bit sketched out about that, if you wanna know the truth. Okay, so this is a power supply support. Um, we just realized there's two positions you can use, short or long. I'm debating on going with the long maybe. But anyway, it uses two of these. They only give you one nut, and the reason for that is the standoff and the screw that goes through the hole the standoff is the other hole. So that took us a minute to sort of figure it out, figure out but once we figured it out, um, it was pretty easy and straightforward. So that holds one, and you put the, screw, the other screw through and the nut, and that's the other. So 
I just need to hold the motherboard up to this or look at the manual and see if they mention which one is the standoff. That way everything's lined up. And I hate the grease, like the finger grease this is holding on to. We're almost done with the transfer of everything. Okay, so the nut is only used if you're using the short position right here. And then you'll have standoff, standoff, nut. We're not using that, so I don't have to do anything there. I'm just gonna pass this screw back through. And then I can put my standoff on there. And then my PSU support bracket installed now. So technically, that's everything transferred over to the power board. This is now the new this that is a lot less rigid than this. So not gonna lie, a little bit of a concern there, but I guess we will just see. If Linus was smart, he would have made this the same size as the standoffs. Oh, poor Linus. If I don't tighten these down, then when I take off the motherboard screws, it'll just undo it. Okay, so I'm gonna get all the standoffs on here, clean the, the thing up and we'll get it reinstalled. Now the manual is also saying that it's highly recommended that you put the power, the distribution block or distribution panel on after this is remounted. Otherwise it's kind of a pain in the butt to get all the cables and stuff through. So I will listen to the manual because they designed the product. So that seems like the right thing to do. Okay, so now we're gonna literally put everything back together in the reverse order. And this is why pictures are important to remember which way these little doohickeys and stuff go to be able to reattach, you know, the, the rear IO plate, you know, and all that, the front, the ra radiator and all that stuff. So uh, we will be back when this is reassembled because it's gonna take a minute. <laughs> Well, here it is fully assembled with the power board. Uh, a lot of the rigidity issues that I was concerned about <clears throat> sort of disappeared once the uh, distribution plate was attached to it because it connects up here with two bolt or two screws and then four along the bottom. So it all went together pretty flawlessly. I mean, effortless, I don't want to say effortlessly. There is a, a bit of a process to putting together an E1, but it is self-explanatory once you take it apart and kind of how it goes back together. I did have to reference my pictures a couple times couple times so definitely take pictures along the way if you're concerned about forgetting how things go together um, if I fold this down out of the way you can see we've got an outlet port there and there and the pump is actually on the back side which is kind of neat this barely clears the bottom because I do have the motherboard tray kind of aligned downward a little bit because I would just have to make these cables longer on the top and shorter on the bottom to pull it down uh, and I did that because I want to have plenty of room for the radiator and fans and stuff up here and then there will be a radiator and fans right here um, it's possible I might just do a top rad because this is going to be CPU only for the cooling, but we'll just have to see. Um, I don't know yet. It's going to be one of those, once I start putting it together, uh, we'll figure it out. I will be using the PMMA black tubing for this and probably satin fittings again. Although I think EK might even have, well, they do have gold fittings. So I don't know yet. We'll see. I may not even go EK fittings. I might go with whoever, whatever company has the fittings that will look best on this. Technically, Bits Power fittings because they're black. Their black fittings have the gold Bits Power logo on them, which would just have a really good tie-in with the theme. I'm not really married to any particular fitting. I, I've used so many of them. Uh, I've had very few leak on me over the years, so I've got a pretty good uh, feeling on which ones I would use. If we look at the back side here, though, you can see here is the uh, pump right there. Here's our power supply mount. Here's our support because I am using a longer power supply. I went with a longer uh, support settings. Remember, we can put it here or here. And then that's kind of it. I mean, it, everything is sort of strategically placed on where like your inputs would be for your ARGB or your fan headers or your PWM signal. You got some down here, you got some up here. Remember there are, um, it's funny because there are LEDs built into this distro plate as well, which you can turn on and off right here. What's funny is we have a power and a reset button right here. And I'm kind of wondering if this is built in for those that maybe don't want to use the gauges on the front, which would be stupid in my opinion, because it's one of the coolest features of the E1, other than the fact that it's carbon fiber. Oh, and I also want to mention, if you look at the front side, for those that are wondering, because I did say, look, we've got the 24 pin and the two EPS right there. If you're not running an EVGA motherboard, you have two EPS on the right and two EPS on the left. And this is gonna give you options for depending on your motherboard layout uh, and where their power is to get the cleanest cable run. So you don't have to use the ones right here. You don't have to use one right there or right there and vice versa. All three of those are connected to the power supply through the power board. That way you can use whichever one kind of fits your build best. So let me do this. Let me get the Z790 in here. Cause remember I went 690 and then 790 came out with 13th gen and that's what we're gonna put in here. I'll put the vertical mount back on and the graphics card back in its place and then we'll see how the power board looks from there. And then from there, really, 
most of the work will just be the loop, to be honest. All right, let's throw some RAM in here. Let's line up the notch and throw some RAM in here. What? DDR5 notches are so much harder to line up because they're nearly centered, so you can't just eyeball it. Obviously, the most satisfying thing is this right here. <laughs> it, because Singularity Computers knew exactly what motherboard I was gonna be using, it's clear they have one of these motherboards in-house anyway, so they can make these cable links exactly what they needed to be. But look at this, I have never had a case or a build where the cables are just this perfect. So there we go, graphics card in. It's surprisingly more rigid than I thought it would be. Uh, I moved the gauges over centered on the fan, the center fan. A lot of you guys suggested that. I kind of agree now, because <clears throat> now that I'm gonna have a rad and stuff right here, I don't need the offset. This, is, this will fill in this space. A rad will go up here. What I had to do though, um, since the last take, is I had to raise the whole motherboard up, the whole tray and everything, because I showed you how it was really close to the floor. But what was happening is these gauges were impacting the graphics card. So I could have had them perfectly up like that, but I like them leaning back a little bit like that. So this is going to be an absolutely gorgeous build. Here's the backside of the power board. So you can see how the cable links are absolutely perfect. I could not be more happy than the way that the, the, the way this turned out. I'm gonna train these cables. I'm gonna move these combs more to the front side for now. Yeah, just imagine the rest of the pieces maybe, I guess I could do silver fittings, like a, like a slightly polished because it'll match all of this hardware here. But once I got everything tensioned and all the adjuster screws where it needed to be so it's centered and flat where I wanted it to be, this thing's under a lot of tension. It's actually kind of scary. But I'm happy with the way this turned out. I'm, I initially told the guys I wasn't gonna wait for the power board because I was concerned about taking away too much EVGA from the EVGA build. And that's clearly not the case. And this is under so much tension, it's actually bowing this piece right here. So I'm just bow that back. It's okay, once I mount the rad to it, it'll be fine. <laughs> There's no screw holes in the middle of that though. So as you can see, the rad just gets mounted on the far corners. I would have liked the middle screws though, just for the bowing issue like that to hold it flat. But I don't know. It is what it is. Well, there you go. The E1 from EVGA just got even more epic. And then the nice thing is, now with this power board here and the distro block or distro plate being smoked like this, it means that the, uh, the cables have a little bit more place to hide, if you will not. And the only cables that are really gonna be visible here now are gonna be fan cables. Because I'm going nothing but NVMe SSD, so there's no SATA cables. I'm not doing any SATA controller type stuff. Um, I'm probably gonna have a, uh, I don't know what fans I'm gonna go with. I might do Be Quiet fans, only because they're black and they'll look really nice when they're off. I might not even do RGB fans at all, to be honest. I might go bit, uh, Bits, or no, um, Fantex T30s or something, something just stealth. And I might let the only lighting on this be, this, this RAM has no lighting. I might change this out to some RGB lighting or RGB RAM, but the graphics card, the motherboard, and the, and the Vengeance or whatever RAM I put on here might end up being the only lighting on this. Because even the distro plate does not have RGB in it like the other ones do. And then the actual power board itself and its lights, that might be it. And then if I, if I do that, they don't have to do any RGB controllers or whatever, and it'll be super, super clean. Anyway, thanks so much for hanging out today, guys. I hope you guys like the way this is turning out. I certainly am. Man, this is, I just, just rename it to the satisfying build. All because of that right there. And yes, I will remove these stickers just so that they aren't sitting there. 